All right. Welcome, everybody, to uh, episode two of the Science of Golf Performance YouTube show. I'm Bobby. I'm Alex. And I'm Chris. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the best ways to use a medicine ball for golf. So most people that have uh, gotten into golf fitness are familiar with the medicine ball. They've probably seen it on Golf Channel, probably seen it in Golf Digest. Bigger the better. A lot of Instagram pages out there with a lot of great medicine ball pros, right? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We love us some medicine ball pros in golf. Oh, what the the favorite one is probably when she uh, threw it through the drywall. The drywall. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. If we've had an incident with some drywall back there. Yeah. Not sure if that's in shot or not, but. <laughs> so uh, yeah, probably start off with saying if you're gonna throw the medicine ball, find a sturdy, supportive structure with which you can throw it against. But the way we usually see it might not even need that type of a sturdy structure because people just aren't quite doing it right. Unfortunately, that is the case sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and be careful, golfers are not known from what we've seen with accuracy with throwing things oh, or, yeah. or catching, so. <laughs> Caution is- uh, Bigger the wall, the better. Yes. <laughs> Concrete and brick are great. Yeah. Um, so the, the way we've seen it a lot, um, you know, in social media or in you know, publication, um, a, a lot of it is geared towards core strength, right? Um, a lot of it's geared towards flexibility um, and golf looking movements, right? Um, it's a lot of intentional slow movements. Uh, people are trying to work through certain positions. Wait, that doesn't help? <sighs> Sadly, no. What? <laughs> no, you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what is another thing that we see a lot? Right? Uh, well, I think a lot of people go into med ball work with actually not having an intent at all, like not knowing, just thinking like, oh, this is going to improve my golf swing because it looks like it, right? So mm -hmm. I'm recreating this movement, it's specific, um, but I don't really know why I'm doing it and that has a huge impact on the actual benefits that you can get from it. Yeah, I think you see it as like a filler a lot too. So uh, if you know, any coaches watching you've ever written a program and you're like, I got a 60 minute class or session, <laughs> Well, that's going to take about 45. I got 10 minutes. Uh, let's do some med ball throws. It'll right. make you feel like you're a golfer. Right. Um, Looks like golf must be golf specific, must, right? Must help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what we see a lot of people using like way too heavy med ball, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that's another one, yeah. yeah. I hit our 20 pounder in the closet because you know our 10 year olds <laughs> were trying to grab it. And it was like, that's the size of your head. Why are you trying to throw that? <laughs> yeah. So. No, yeah. I think, yeah. Way too heavy, way too slow. Yeah. Even the other day, we were doing testing. We had you know, 30 or so juniors here, and we were doing testing. And, you know, just doing like a shot put throw. Mm -hmm. And kids are like trying to throw it like a baseball. I have other kids that are just trying to swing a 20 pound, or not, it was six pounds. I'm exaggerating a little. <laughs> but they're swinging a six pound ball, and they're trying to throw it like they're swinging a golf club. Mm -hmm. and I, like, no cue at all. The kids, he must have been 12, but he just immediately said, Oh, I should do it like a golf swing because it's from golf, it's golf fitness. Um, yeah, I think those are all huge, hugely common errors that we see. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that we are starting to coach up and have been for a while is using the ground, right? So a lot of great research is coming out using force plates, uh, using pressure maps, everything that kind of shows golfers, hey, you might think you're you know, swinging a club, but really where you're getting all this speed and power from is your ability to push into the ground using our three ground reaction forces. So, yeah. Well, I think even before we get into that, I think there's some great articles, um, simplyfaster.com is mm -hmm. some, a couple of really good ones on all the research on medicine ball work okay. too, like on how it helps. Um, there's a number, I think a couple of ones that was done in baseball. It's super murky though, in terms of how much it actually helps. Right. Like they'll say like, oh yeah, they swung faster, the bat speed went up, but they're like, we don't really know how it worked or what happened, but they swung faster and there was medicine ball work. So something is happening. That um, must've been it. Right. 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 But I think when you think of you know the reason why the heavy balls are not helpful is because A, they're too heavy to move fast, but they're not heavy enough to provide enough load for it to actually be power training, right? Yeah. Um, it's like you know, giving you a 20 pound medicine ball, but I mean, you can bench like a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh wait, or was that what you curl? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, but no, but seriously, you give a guy like who can bench 400 pounds, a 20 pound med ball, like that's not putting any load on your tissue or your, your nervous system to the point where we're going to be have true power results on that. Right. Um, but, it, but it slows you down. Now you're not getting speed either. Yeah. I think that's the huge part. Yeah. You need so. some kind of stimulus to create what you're looking for, 
launches to produce more force, right? And I think people are either focused on too much mass or too much acceleration. Those are the two parts of that. Yeah, totally agree. So I think those, that's, you know, the, going back to that first part of the thing, going too slow or too heavy. Yeah. Um, you know, pick one or the other. I think it's almost better to err on the side of like screw the med ball and just go heavy weight. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, forget the heavy weight and go super fast. At least, at least work on one end of the spectrum. Right. Um, and, but, you know, obviously that's not what we preach. <laughs> Um, it's kind of, you know, with that intent and whatnot. And I think that does lead into the, you know, ground reaction forces. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the, you're a little bit more versed in the, some of the research there. What's, what are you seeing in that? Yeah. So we've got three ground reaction forces, right? We've got the vertical force, you've got your horizontal force and you have your torsional or rotational force. Obviously golf is a pretty unique sport and that we're using all three simultaneously. Um, obviously if you go deep dive into some of the data, you can see It'll peak at different times based on where you are in the swing and different players will peak at different times, right? But we're using all three of those during the entirety of the swing. Um, so the idea would be then that if certain players swing a certain way, we can use the intent of our medicine ball throws to either bolster or weaken what their natural tendency are and make those power exercises much more specific to what they need. What are, the, what are some ways you've seen it? You, I mean, you coach most of the golfers through here in terms of those specific use, use cases. Like what sort of like cues or instances have you seen yet? Someone who's throwing like rainbows mm -hmm. that, that you like make a cue that changes how they're making more intent, how they're using the ground, and then they also they're throwing like lasers. Yeah, definitely. I think the, the first thing is to really have a focus on, you know, the med ball is not just, you're not throwing it with your arms, but you are using your legs and your hips and just like you are on the golf swing, it's a hip extension movement and that's what you kind of want to drive with the medicine balls. Um, so, you know, some, you could see someone who favors like a, like a horizontal push from the ground rather than a vertical. And in that case, that person, you want to be like, oh, you know, almost think more, you're, you're jumping up, you're pushing up from the ground. You're not so much like pushing the ground to the side, but you're pushing upwards with it. And, um, you know, opposedly to that, if you see someone who's throwing those rainbows and throwing more upwards, you might want to sh show them or, tell them to push more away the ground, use more of a horizontal push through that. Um, so just making them aware of the different types, of the different ways to kind of use the ground, that there is more than one way and, um, you know, how to get the most out of that movement. Well, I think and there's a sequence to it too. I think in golf we talk a lot about the kinematic sequence in terms of what hips move first, you know, torso second, mm -hmm. arms third, hands last. Mm -hmm. um, now kinetically, how, in the golf swing, how does that sequence go? Well, it depends on the athlete, right? So Wait, they don't all do it the same? <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily. So what we're trying to figure out is, is there an optimal way to do it? Or is it more based on what that athlete's you know, sports structure was as they were growing up? Does it have to do with their body shape? Does it have to do with their unique strengths and weaknesses? Um, or, you know, is there an optimal way to create more speed? So I think that's an important thing in terms of future research that you can deep dive into. Um, and really see, you know, at what sequence is optimal and what peaking times are best as well. Yeah. So. And I think what we're seeing with a lot of the research now is supporting the fact that if you are leading with your hips first, right, you're going to get a little more drive coming through after with your arms, your torso and your arms. Um, so we do teach when we're doing those medicine ball drills mm -hmm. to lead with the hips and to get those hips through first so that we won't have those arms lagging or that we will have those arms lagging behind you too. Yeah. Well, I think one of the biggest misnomers or misunderstandings <clears throat> in golfers is if you don't drive vertically off your lead leg, you will not clear that left hip. You're going to, so somebody who really slides through the golf ball and, and covers it, or, you know, if we can get them to drive more vertically off their lead leg, that hip actually does clear. Yeah. And, you know, assuming they have the mobility to do so. Yeah. Um, but I think interestingly, when we went up, you know, we've kind of played around on this with the force plates and looking at different medicine ball throws, you know, an Ironman throw is kind of probably one of the top three exercises that we use you know, here and driving. If we tell the athlete to really minimize knee bend and just go, there's minimal vertical force. And it actually, you'll see the vertical force first, which for many golfers is the is total opposite of how they swing the golf club. Normally, we will see horizontal drive, you know, uh, kinetic force first, then torsional, then vertical. Um, so depending on if you get someone to kind of stay in a little bit of a squat, stay low, and then drive at the end, that totally changes their, their kinetic sequence. So base, that's where we talk about, we talk about coaching it. You know, driving off your trail leg is going to 
and drive more horizontal. You know, if we obviously if you've ever seen my video on YouTube, you know, swinging a golf club on ice skates and the feet go this way. Yeah. Um, trail foot kind of goes back based on kinetic forces, and then obviously you have the the big drive, you know, vertically on the left leg. Um, so depending on your player and what their preferences are, you can totally alter those. Um, so yeah, so I think regardless of the med ball exercise we pick, right, whether it's a scoop throw, throwing more kind of from the hip, uh, whether it's an iron an iron man throw from the elbow and driving, mm-hmm. or if it's you know we call like a squared scoop toss where you're standing and you're kind of alternating side to side, you know those tend that tends to be more torsional, and then depending on how you coach the scoop or the iron, um, those can be more vertically horizontally uh, or torsionally driven. So I think that's really and then we have plenty of other med ball exercises, you know, slams, uh, you know, an overhead toss. So it would be vertical, right? right. So let's, let's give everyone, with, like, what are the top two things you guys use for vertical force? Uh, I mean, I like the balls. overhead caveman toss, like we call it. Yeah. Um, it's a great low impact exercise for older yeah. adults. Triple extension. Kids love it because you can kind of see, you know, how high the ball went up into the air. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you need some space to do that. Um, don't try to break your water balance. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and make sure you've got a clear area. People aren't walking underneath. But I think that's a great exercise for both our juniors and our adults. So yeah. that's one of my favorites. Yeah, definitely. Um, and on top of that, just a med ball slam uh, for another vertical one if you can really get the person to get the idea in their head of how to use the ground vertically in that case um, it can be extremely effective yeah make sure you're not using a rubber ball right alice you don't want it to come straight back oh yeah your not the, those med balls we we, use a we've slam seen, ball. Yeah, <laughs> seen it so it doesn't hit you in the face um and then, you know so i think that's important to really think about you know the type of exercise you're going to choose you know vertically you know caveman throws or, or slams are a great option I think you start looking at horizontal drives. That's where you can get to kind of like a, a hop back where you yeah. hop back and then there has to be that big horizontal drive first off the you know, inside of the trail foot, um, you know, step behinds. You can, there's different variations you can do to the med ball. I think the big goal of this video is there aren't really three best overall exercises. Mm-hmm. I think it's understanding your golfer, understand what they're trying to do and how they perform their best in the golf swing and then optimize their training around how they're using the ground and whichever exercise then provides that, that's great. And I, I will say what we've seen on the fourth plates, Ironman is definitely more torsional and horizontal unless you add the knee bend. Um, your scoop throw is going to be more vertical and horizontal. Um, and tor- torsion is going to more so, we see it a lot in the square scoop the toss. Yeah. So um, I think that pretty much wraps up. Anything else we want to cover? Don't be that person on Instagram that we laugh at. Yeah, don't definitely don't do that. <laughs> so hopefully you guys, you know, if you like the content, please like the video. Um, you know, definitely subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more uh, content coming. Uh, and definitely share it with your friends um, or, or other golfers. You know, if, if you share it with your clients um, or you know with your colleagues, just to help them start to understand kind of hopefully this triggers you to dig deeper into the ground reaction forces and, yeah. and those sorts of things. Uh, definitely check out um, Simply Faster is a good resource um, in terms of the research that's out there on medicine balls, um, best types of exercises, how they truly work. Yep. Um, I think the wrap up, some of it is go light and fast as opposed to heavy and slow. Yeah. <laughs> and the general overriding theory or idea is that it really works on your sequence. And the sequence kinematically is driven by kinetically what you do and how you use the ground. So thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you next episode.